Hello everyone, this is the second handed hand of the C++ programming and today we have to do a maze and so far I've succeeded and I will show you just the coding at first and after that I will show you uh, how the program looks like. So first of all I've included three uh, libraries and the first one is the IO stream library which is just standard for allowing inputs and outputs. I have the CSTD lib which is uh, which allows our random number generation used for later together with uh, C time. I also have this using namespace std which is a feature that allows us to, to skip writing std before each line of the code. Um, first of all uh, I've created three structs uh, the first one being the killer um, and this struct has an integer has two integers actually, which is x and y, and it has a char, which is kill. Uh, these three structs will be used uh, for later when I need to create my enemies. So I also created a constant char, which is the height uh, and the width, which is used for the maze itself. As you can see here, we have 18 characters this way, uh, zero. It's the first one, of course, and then we have uh, 17 here. We have an, uh, some other constant charge. We have my hero, which is the O. So whenever he's inside the maze, he will look like an O. We have the enemy one, which is K. We have B, we have R, and we have the goal G. Uh, enemy one is called K because he is the killer. So you can recognize him by the K. We have B, which is the blocker, and we have R, which is the restart enemy. Uh, I decided to create a 2D maze or 2D array called my map, where I have the variables height and width inside of it, and it will look exactly like this in the command prompt screen. So, with the maze created, I created a function called refresh my map, which is re basically it's just refreshing the, the current maze of how it looks. So with the first line here, you are creating a hero on my map and the coordinates player position X and player position Y, which up here is one and one. So that is the starting point of our hero. Then we have my map, the goal position X and goal position Y, which is the integers up here, 10 and 7 or 16 where the goal is positioned so when this is done we I have created a nested loop uh, nested for loop which first of all um, we'll look at the integer y is equal to 0 uh, when that is done it will make sure that i is not higher than the height which is 18 and after that it will add 1 to the y every time it's run and when it's done, it will just uh, output the output uh, an end line, and it will just begin on a new line. Um, in the second part of the nested loop, we will have the x, the integer x, which is equals to zero, and this as well cannot be uh, bigger than the width, which is 11 or 18. So it was actually 11 before, um, and every time it's run you will have x plus plus which is just x plus one and it will output the positions uh, my map of y and x so this will basically create our map and it will return turn value of zero so when this function is run after that we will have the spawn enemy one which is the first of three spawn enemy uh, functions. This one, um, I'm creating a variable called my enemy one from the earlier uh, mentioned struct named killer. So I'm gonna give the the variables inside the struct some uh, some functions, and I do this by by saying my enemy one, which was the variable name of the struct uh, dot kill which is the value inside the, the struct itself, uh, the integer. So here's x, 
Um, actually, this one is, is the char, so it's kill. Uh, my enemy dot kill is equal to enemy one, and the enemy one up here was the k. So this enemy when it spawn will have a k, as uh, so you know it's it's that kind of killer. Uh, after that, I created uh, an x spawn position uh, and a y spawn position for the, the spawn point of these uh, of this enemy, uh, and I gave it a random number to be spawned at. So the enemy spawn point x, the enemy one spawn point x, is equal to a random number uh, of modulus nine plus one, and this is done. Um, because this will return a value that is the first here, random number from, from modulus 9, is a value from 0 to 8. And because I don't want it to spawn at 0, as 0 is the outer line and that is only has tags, and I don't want it to go through the walls, uh, I added 1. So it would be between 1 and 9, which you can see here is actually inside the maze itself. Uh, let's see here. Oh, I forgot. I need to to use this s rand of time zero. This is basically basically just done to to give um, to initialize the seeding of of the random number generation. So when I've created these spawn points, uh, I have to make sure that it doesn't spawn inside a, a hashtag or on my player inside the maze. This is why I created uh, an if statement that says if the enemy spawn point x and y inside the, the maze um, is not equal to a hashtag and is not equal to the character uh, char then you then it will spawn um, the enemy inside the, the maze and after that it returns the value of zero so it does this the same for 1, 2, and 3, so there's no need to explain the rest. Then I have the player direction function, which is the function that will create the player movement. So I've created a for loop inside here, and first you will, you will uh, input uh, a character, which is defined by the player movement. And the player movement is uh, a char. As you can see way up here, player movement char, and I will create a switch uh, based on this one. So the first case is the W, so when you press the W something will happen and the rest goes for S and A and D, the movement arrows. So if my map, if it's inside the maze, if the player position X minus one, player position and play position y is not equal to a hashtag, and if it's not equal to the enemy uh, two, then uh, it will erase the current position of the the character, and it will subtract one from the current character x position. Uh, that is the the enemy two, which was uh, which was the the blogger. So. Actually, just won't go through, can't go through the wall, and it can't go through the, the blocker. And I also created an if statement based on the enemy three, which is the restarting enemy. If you, uh, let's see here, yeah, if if it's equal to if you, the player position x and y on the my map is equal to the enemy three restart enemy, then it will remove the current. Um, character of uh, of the hero, and it will put you back on position x y one one, which is the starting point. And the last one here, if my map player position x and y is equal to enemy one, so if you actually go into enemy one, the the current character will be removed, and you will be notified that you were killed. Pay attention, because the enemy one was actually the kill enemy. So if you trust this you will lose and you will have to restart the game. And after all this has been gone through, the case will break and it will, yeah, and then actually then we're done with player direction. Uh, same goes for S, A, and D. Uh, it's the same code basically for, for each different key you press. However, there's one difference, that is if you press the S button, 
uh, and you are close to the goal if the position y and x on my map is equal to the goal then it will just show you that you have won and it will keep doing that so that's actually end of the game when you've won uh, after this is done uh, I've created a console output of spawn enemy 1, 2 and 3 to, to spawn new enemies every time this function is run and I will refresh the map as well when this is done. So that's basically the functions in, inside. Then I have the main file. Uh, first of all just an introduction to how you play this game. Uh, the I will output the spawn one uh, position, the spawn one enemy, spawn two and spawn three. I will refresh the map, so it will go up and refresh in the run the function refresh map. I will uh, output an end line just to make a, uh, a line between each uh, each maze. It will run, and it will run the player direction, which is the character you will press when doing this. So I'll just show you how it looks like when you are when you're playing this game. So as you can see here, we have the introduction up here, and we have the character. Uh, and it has spawned it some random enemies. However, these will only spawn if they are not inside a hashtag. And as you can see, one of these uh, were actually were here, so it has spawned a cake. Now I can move either right or or down. I'll just try to run a bit. Then it creates a new maze, and I can do this all the time. See now you can see I have two more enemies. I have a, a restart enemy and I have a block enemy. Just to show you how these work. I'm going down to the blogger. Now I'm going to press down and it won't let me go down because it's blocking my path so I can't go down. And right now as you can see on the map I actually can't get to the goal so I, I'll just kill myself going into the cage. I will just say this. You, you have been killed. Pay attention next time. Just run it once more just to, to reach the goal. Ah, blogger. And as you can see, every time I move, sometimes a new enemy is spawned. And I'm very close to the goal. You won. Ta -da. Very easy. Alright, just as last, I want to show you how the restart works. I just need an R. Make it an R, please. I'll restart there. So it, actually, it restarted, put me back to position 1.1. But as there was a K there, I actually got killed. So this is how it looks, and uh, I hope this is uh, is good enough. Yeah. So see ya.